Hello and welcome to C Programming Video. My name is David Thorne. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about how to read data sent to your application through Standard In. Now, what do I mean by this? So just to um, give you an example, if you're not 100% sure about this, let's pop over to the terminal and show you the three files that we're talking about. As you can see, when we look at the contents of the dev directory, just grepping STD or standard, you can see we have standard in, out, and error. And these are our links to then the file descriptors one, uh, zero, and two. So this is when we use then the likes of uh, write, for example, when we come to the, um, the uh, Unix uh, H code here, and we look at, uh, write. You can see here that we need to write to a file descriptor and this is exactly what we're talking about here, the 0, 1 or 2. And when we look at then uh, the uh, the uh, standard IO uh, H, when we want to call then fwrite for example here, you can see that we're getting a, a file that we're writing to on the end. And this can be then uh, found by by saying then the file number and here we would say, say standard out or in this sense we're talking about standard in okay so we can get the file number so this is important to understand is that your application receives the information through the arguments but we can pipe uh, data or we can redirect data to the application through uh, we can basically your application it can listen to the standard in right and and another application's standard out can be redirected to the standard in of this one application. So if you're not using a uh, redirect like this, if you're just basically um, saying echo is then a uh, an executable here and you say hello, then this is just an argument to hello. We don't even need these um, the quotes. We can just say hello world, which is echo then getting three arguments, right? The first argument is the actual echo uh, file itself where it is uh, echo here and you can see that it's in bin echo and then this the uh, index one and index two are hello and world right but if we then just redirect uh, this to then uh, standard uh, out here whoops and we say here uh, and we redirect that to standard out that's basically doing is taking the standard out of this and passing it to uh, this one file, which is doing basically exactly the same thing. So we need to prepare with inside of our application to read from standard in. OK, so we could still get these arguments, but we could also get standard in. Now, when we talk about standard in, let's just let's just go through this first of all. And in order to read from standard in, we want to read it in this example, char by char. All right. So we can create a while loop and we're just going to create a uh, char, whoops, a char uh, C in the beginning. And we'll just say char C is equal to F gets, uh, whoops, F uh, gets C. And the file that we're going to read in is then a standard in. And uh, if this is not equal to end of file right well this is not equal to end of file we can then say uh, put uh, char and c right and then we can print down here is uh, completed all right so when we run this you'll notice that we we uh, you'll notice that we don't actually get out of the application because it's still waiting for standard in okay however when we come over to the uh, console and we come into the application was then C arguments and now we uh, actually build uh, build this application and we then say uh, um, go in the build directory debug uh, debug and then the C arguments and we run this you'll see once again that it, it's still it's still not working right so let's just come here and say print F and say uh, running right run in here and let's put a backslash n here whoops backslash n and we'll run it again or compile it again and run it again you see that the application is uh, working but it's waiting for um, a standard in so in order to get standard in we've just been through this already we can then say hello world here once again and now we can uh, pipe this to it right 
And you can see here we get running and then hello world and then uh, completed. Now, I just want to make clear is that this C arguments is a file, right? So we can't uh, redirect it. And I'll just show you what happens if we do redirect it. And now we uh, run the application again. You can see that we get we get a problem because hello is being written to the file. And if we uh, now just cut it out, you'll see that we get hello world in the file. So basically by redirecting the standard out of this, we wrote it to the actual file itself. But because these are special files, right, for our application, uh, we need to firstly uh, rebuild it once again. And in this example, we've got to actually delete the file uh, because it's, yeah, we need to re-delete it. And then when we run this once again, uh, you'll see, whoops, oh, I just did it again. <laughs> and then when we do it once again, you'll see running Hello World's completed. So now the, the question is, is fair enough. What about if you haven't received, what if you haven't received anything being piped to you here? This is technically another video, right? However, you, you need to be able to differentiate by a couple of things. One, am I being piped to? Two, am I not being piped to? And three, do I have arguments, right? And am I being piped to? And so it's an easy way to do this, right? With inside of this while loop here, we what we need to check is we need to check whether or not we actually have an interactive terminal, okay? And we do this by saying, is a, 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 a teletype here, teletype writer, right? And a teletype writer means that we, if we just say, if we just do um, this, execute the application here, we have a TTY here, we have a teletype, we have a interactive terminal here. The, the application could ask for us to type some information in. Basically, our keyboard is attached to this one application. That's the whole point of it. A teletype writer, it, it prints stuff out and you, and you can also, with a keyboard, you can add input into it as well. It has an IO, input and output. So, but when we do piping, piping says, hey, you can output, but the input is being controlled uh, by a different manner, all right? But you can still get arguments as well. If you could do it in, in another manner, you could do it backwards like this, and then you could you could um, put this standard in from another another file. And let's just see whether this works. I've not tried this before, but okay, that doesn't work, right? But we could, um, we could for example, touch uh, uh, text. We could say, let's just do vim uh, input dot txt and say, and I've obviously created it before, hello world. And now we can come here and then say input txt. And let's just rewrite in this file, hello world uh, from, from input txt or input text, whatever, and run this again. You can see hello world from input text. So to be able, we can redirect the standard out or the contents of this one file to the standard in of of this one application and this is then using the uh, the uh, the uh, the, the le less than uh, less than sign all right so but remember doing the greater than sign to our application is literally just going to rewrite over the file so now that we have this we need to work out do we have an interactive terminal and we can see that uh, when we run it like this, we don't have an interactive terminal because it just exits, okay? So um, we can do this by just saying, um, let's just show you what, what this is needing here. Uh, let's just do this again. And you can see that it has an integer. And this is just basically waiting for a file uh, number, okay? And you've seen this already, the file descriptor uh, one when we look at um, when we look at the ls um, and then we'll just say dev and then fd you'll see these are the file descriptors that it's looking for 0 1 2 3 and 4 okay that's what it's looking for here and standard in is equal to uh, is was equal to 1 okay so is file number that's that there that's all fine Mm -hmm. Let's rewrite this again. If, whoops, 
if is is a t so uh, file num here and then standard in that's fine okay so if um, this if this is equal to uh, one all right well, you'll see it in a second let's just go here say has a uh, active um, terminal right or an interactive terminal is probably better to say right so let's let's build build and run our application once again and you can see here hello world from input text all right now if we just run it normally you can see it has an active terminal right so this returns uh, one so if it if it is equal to one then print has an active terminal and else we now know that we uh, don't have an active terminal here, which means we don't have a TTY, all right? So this is a TTY, an active terminal. So now when we come here and we uh, close the application and we do swift build and we run this once again, you can see here we get hello world from the input text. And when we do it then the other way around, we then uh, pipe in, we can then say uh, cats input, input uh, text as well. And we can pipe that over and we get exactly the same thing we can say uh, david uh, thorn here and then we can pipe that to the application again and you'll see we get this here so this is the way for you to understand is how we write to standard in and let's just go back to the beginning again when you write st stand when you write uh, text to standard out here you are able to take that standard out and pass it, redirect it to the standard in of another application, right? Which means also your application can, re, uh, can receive standard in plus arguments as well. So just to show you this is that we can receive arguments as well. If we now come here and say, let's say David uh, James Thorne, right? You can see here it only comes to there but what about if we if we now come round and say for uh, i so int i is equal to zero and then i is less than arg c uh, then arg c uh, or sorry uh, i plus plus and we just print out then arguments whoops arguments uh, string here and then arg v and then i if we come and re, re uh, build this and run it again you can see that we get argument here and david james thorne so we can receive both all right it just depends upon uh, if it just depends upon which order you do them and let's just run it in the other direction as well which was to um, input the text right so here here we are taking the uh, the argument here Right, and then we are redirecting uh, the the output of this to the application, but there's nothing stopping us from coming here and saying David James uh, Thorne here, right? And you can see here argument David James Thorne, and we still get the standard in. So it means you can you're still able to receive your standard arguments, right, and also listen for uh, standard in. And I would be careful about that. Say to listen for standard in because this is. This is putting some stress on the system, looking and reading standard in all the time. There's other better ways of doing this, uh, but for the sake of demonstration, it works perfectly fine. So with that said, I think I've managed to, to do everything here. I'll just, just to basically cover up what this put char is doing, if you haven't seen it already. So put char is doing um, basically the same as what printf is doing, but it's just basically saying uh, this here, and let's just comment it out and run this once again and you'll see that we get let's go over to the terminal and show it once again and we do swift build and we run this and you get exactly the same thing here all right so printf is basically taking a formatted string and then adding the c whereas put char is then just basically calling printf with this with uh, the c here so it's doing basically the same thing so if you hadn't seen that already um, and if you haven't seen the other video about uh, basically what uh, printf is doing printf is doing f print f and sending that to standard out all right uh, and, and so on so it's really really quite quite simple all right but for you in order to understand 
other more complex tasks, especially when it comes down to networking or Unix or anything like that with the file system. It's truly mostly, it's totally important to understand how to read the files. Um, how, yeah, how to read the files, whether you read it by char, by char, byte by byte, line by line, or, or using a buffer and so on. And uh, also how to redirect the information uh, to standard in, standard out, standard error, etc., etc. With that said, I hope that you got something out of this one video. If you did, then don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And uh, if you notice, I was recording this video on the 24th, it's today. And, but this video is not going to be released until the 30th of September. I always bulk make these videos, okay? So I make like maybe four, five, six uh, at a time, depending upon how much time in the day I have. Um, and But each video only gets released on a daily basis. So they're always released at 12 o'clock um, every single day. But if you want to receive all of these videos as I release them, and literally on, or as the day I upload them, um, then you're more than welcome to become a member uh, you, you don't have to. You can obviously still see the videos, but you're going to have to wait until they are uh, released. But uh, if you look in the playlist under the C pro programming, you may see uh, there's videos uh, there visible, but you can't see them yet because you need to be a member. So it's just a, a thought for you. If you want to uh, support this video even further um, as what you are already doing right now by watching this video and essentially watching all the way through to the end, uh, then maybe think about uh, joining me and becoming a member. Um, I won't be offended if you don't, but I'm, I'm truly happy that you're watching all the way to the end of the video, basically. With that said, if you've got any questions, feedback or concerns, um, then let's start a conversation in the comment section down below. Other than that, thanks very much for watching. My name is David Thorne. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.